Hello. I wanted to explain to you uh, how you can recover from built-up tension. Tension, as it is described in your text, uh, is regulated by your autonomic nervous system. And there's two parts to this nervous system. One part charges up your muscles. Anytime you're doing any kind of work or activity, you need the energy going to your muscles. The opposite part of that nervous system does the maintenance work in your body. It digests your food, cleans out your blood, basically keeps you healthy over the long term. Those two parts of the nervous system work opposite each other. One's on, the other's down. The other one's on, the first one's down. They're never on at the same time. You don't tune up a car while you're driving it down the road. You can do maintenance on the car, shut it down, let it cool off, cool off, and then you can work on it. Same thing, you wouldn't eat a big huge meal and then go, on, go out and run five miles. You're going to find the meal alongside the road somewhere. Okay, so you don't digest your food while you're running. If you're running, this part's going to be shut down. So what happens in stress is the buildup of tension over time gets you stuck. So this part of the nervous system, which is referred to as the autonomic or the uh, sympathetic nervous system, uh, gets stuck on, where the parasympathetic nervous system, the opposite part that does the maintenance uh, work of your body, is suppressed. And if you look at the anatomy of these two nervous systems, there's actually a loop that goes from one to the other, so that when one is activated, the other is suppressed. Now the problem with stress is when the tension reaches a certain level, the body interprets it as a threat. Bottom line is if you're being chased by a bear, it doesn't matter if you digest breakfast. What matters is you get away from the bear and don't become his breakfast. Okay, So this part of the nervous system gets suppressed and this one actually gets an extra boost. And the way that works is your body secretes stress hormones at different places and these go into the blood and they actually change the chemistry of your blood. The function is to get an extra boost to the sympathetic nervous system and to further suppress the parasympathetic. The problem with stress is you're using this extra energy to build up more tension. So the body recognizes a higher level of tension, secretes more stress hormones, which then activates the muscles to create more tension, which secretes more stress hormones, which carries on this self-escalating process, and things keep on getting worse until you do something to make them better. Okay? Here's what you can do to make it better. It's very simple. You simply stimulate the other nervous system. Remember, there's a loop that when one is stimulated, the other is suppressed. Okay? So by stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system, you stop the buildup of tension right now. You'll feel the difference in less than a minute. If you don't feel the difference in less than a minute, you're not using the proper technique. Okay? It's fairly precise, but it's also simple, and the good news, it is natural. This is our natural way of breathing when we don't have a buildup of tension. Okay? Here's how it works. The main nerve that feeds your internal organs is about the size of your thumb. passes right through the center of your body. Okay? There's a muscle at the bottom of your lung, shaped like a parachute. It's called the diaphragm. There's an opening in that muscle, and that nerve passes through the opening. So what I'm going to show you how to do is to breathe so you get that diaphragm moving in a slow, continuous rhythm. And that's the key. Slow, continuous. Three to four seconds down, three to four seconds up. When you do that, you are gently stimulating that nerve with every breath. That activates the parasympathetic nervous system, suppresses the sympathetic nervous system, puts you in recovery mode. Now, if you do that for just a few moments, as I said, you'll feel relaxed right away. But if you stop doing it, the tension's going to go right back again because of the stress hormones in your blood. That's their function. Okay? If a bear is chasing me, I'm not going to take a nap under a tree and rest to, to regain my energy again. Okay, I'm going to keep running and my body's going to give me more and more energy to get away from the bear. And that's a good thing. The problem is, is the bears in our life aren't on four feet. Okay? There are different kinds of bears. And, and the tension just keeps on building up because we don't use our muscles to solve our problems. Taking two or three diaphragmatic breaths is enough to stop the buildup of tension. So when you're in a stressful situation and you take a few breaths, it helps to clear your mind and see more uh, accurately what's going on and what your choices are. Okay? Uh, but in order to recover from the buildup of tension that's been there for probably weeks or months or in many cases years, you need to do the breathing on a regular basis. Okay? Uh, if you just do it for a few moments, you'll stop the buildup of tension from the uh, 
uh, the, the parasympath or the sympathetic nervous system that's charged up. Okay, uh, but remember the stress hormones in your body uh, will activate it again. Okay, because that's their function. They're keeping the bear away. They're giving the energy to your muscles so you can run away from that bear. So what you need to do is you need to stimulate this parasympathetic nervous system by doing the breathing and then leave it on. Leave it on for at least three to five minutes. Now your liver has a chance to clean out your blood. Over a period of about two to four weeks, your liver can get all of the stress hormones out of your blood and then the symptoms of tension along with things like anxiety and panic attacks tend to disappear. So here's how the, the breathing works, okay? You bring the air to the bottom of your lungs, pushes the diaphragm down, and that pushes your stomach and intestines out, okay? If you try to force it, okay, if you try to make it happen, it doesn't work because you're using muscles to use the breathing, okay? So here is not the way to do the breathing. Watch this. Now my hand is moving out because the diaphragm is moving down and the stomach and intestines are pushing the hand out, which is the key to the movement. But the problem is, is I'm using my muscles to control the action and I'm not actually feeling relaxed. Here's the proper technique. See if you can see the difference. Notice my fingers are moving out rather than up, okay, and it's in a relaxed, easy way, easy way, okay. If I fill up a glass with water, okay, I pour water in a glass, the water goes to the bottom of the glass and then works its way up, okay. Do the same thing with your breath. Just allow it to come to the bottom of your lungs, okay. Diaphragm comes down, stomach and intestines come up. Now here's what I often see with clients who come in with a lot of stress and tension, okay? They'll, st they'll say, someone tell them to take a deep breath, and here's what they do. They go, okay? The diaphragm didn't move at all. All of the breath was in the chest, okay? That actually will stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, there are football teams that, that do <sighs> to pump themselves up to get a a, a extra adrenaline so they can go out and hit hard. That's not necessarily the best technique for dealing with day-to-day -day stress, though. Okay, so what you want to do is allow the breath to gently come down to the bottom of your lungs. Your hand moves out. Okay. Now, when you're first practicing it, you may initially get some movement up here. Okay, so it may be something like this. I see lots of variations. Okay, so. Now that's probably 30-40% efficient in terms of actually uh, clearing out the stress hormones and helping us recover from uh, built up stress. But it's a good place to start because as long as the diaphragm is moving, okay, it's going to release that tension and it's going to move more easily. And within a few days of practice, you'll be able to get it up to 100% efficient. The problem is, is if your hand moves up with the breath, You're not getting any movement of the diaphragm, and it's not helping at all. So the key, actually, is to get that hand moving out as you breathe in, and then it comes down as you breathe out. Okay? Now, sometimes, if there's a lot of tension in the diaphragm, it seems to get stuck. And what I found helps in this position is you simply take a towel, like a bath towel, and roll it up and put it right behind your back, right across here, and you're going to lean back, kind of like this. Okay? That puts a stretch here okay? and drops your stomach and intestines a little bit and makes it easier to practice the breathing. If you have any questions, uh, please send me an email at pfhw181 at earthlink.net. Uh, or you can, and you can uh, if you'd like to talk about it, you can send me your phone number, and I'm happy to give you a call and talk you through it. Good luck. Have fun.